Hello everyone, it's Eric here, and in this video I'm going to be doing a little unboxing of the new uh, Warhammer the Old World uh, Bretonian Knights of the Realm on foot. So, I've been eyeing this kit for a while, I think it, it looks really great, I like the concept, I really like knights, and the fact that you don't have to worry about horses with these guys is really refreshing. So, here's the box, I already started to kind of open it, and here's the back, you can see it gives you 20. And uh, you can make either two units 10 or one unit 20. You get them either axes or swords and shields. Personally, I kind of like the swords and shields better. And you get a transfer sheet and you even get a little uh, color guide on this one. And, you know, I think it's interesting that uh, this new uh, old world box design, it kind of resembles a very uh, a much older uh design of Warhammer boxes from, I think it's around 6th edition. I'll, I'll show, I'll put up an image on the screen, but yeah, let's take a look at the contents of the box. All right, so we have a transfer sheet and again, it's all axes. Kind of wish uh, you got some different patterns besides the axes, but oh well, it's fine. We have our instruction booklet. Yeah, very nice, uh, clean, crisp 3D renders. Very clear instructions. We've got uh, more instructions. Yeah, good to see that uh, all the pieces are clearly labeled and numbered and you can see how it all fits together so yeah very nice so let's take a look at the actual sprues themselves so there's two different kinds of sprues in this kit there's one sprue for the command group and the axes this come um, this comes with all your components for the uh, command group such as musician champion and standard bear as well as some extra heads you get two of these sprues so you get two of these and then you get four of the standard knight sprue. So on this sprue, it contains five knights with a sword and shield, and you get four of them. So, and of course you get 20, 25 millimeter bases. So, okay, let's just take a look at the sprues individually. So the first thing I'm noticing is just how incredibly sharp and detailed and crisp these miniatures are. It's <laughs> their plastic technology or whatever they use to make these, their sculpting or whatever is, it's really improved. I mean, these are incredibly detailed and crisp and sharp and smooth. So these are very nice, very fine, uh, subtle details, like fine folds and really crisp edges. And I mean, Find you'd have a hard time getting this level of Christmas crispness in, say, like a 3D print. But then again, I'm not uh, I'm not super caught up on the state of the art of 3D printing. But I don't know, maybe it is there already. But but yeah, even so, just the quality of the sculpts is just so sharp, so crisp, and I really like the you know the anatomy, the details, and the proportions of the knights. And I just I'm just totally thinking about all the different ways I'm going to paint these guys because I'm totally going for, you know, the knights from all the different realms or dukedoms. And I don't really like the, I'm not a huge fan of the, all the knights being red and black. So I'm just going to make all of them with the standard, you know, with the old fashioned kind of red, yellow, blue color schemes and white and black and kind of the motley assortment of different color schemes in a single unit. I think that looks really visually stunning and interesting. So that's what, totally what I'm going for. I think it's interesting that uh, they kind of sculpted um, little uh, in in the if you look in the visors of their helmets, you can see like a nose and some eyes, and I think that's uh, that's pretty cool that they did that. Although personally, for my taste, I kind of like the look of just like a black slit for the helmet. I think that it makes the knights look a bit more imposing or mysterious. And I feel like when you when you can see like eyes and a nose, it does kind of make it feel more human and relatable. And I feel like for knights, I think part of their appeal is just their, it's just the fact that they're mysterious and you don't know 
since they're entirely covered in armor, you don't know who's inside of it. I think that, you know, that looks pretty cool. So my goal, my plan is to just paint uh, all the facial details in the visor slit black and then maybe apply like a matte varnish so it's not catching any reflections. So yeah, that should work. And yeah, I mean, uh, there's just so many little details. The more you look at it, the more you see details. Like here, there's a little grail icon, little keys, and extra heads and wings for the helmets. Yeah, it's really nice. Very crisp, very sharp. I think, I don't know, these axes don't quite do it for me. I feel like it's kind of a, it's an interesting design for an axe, but these are just huge axes. And I mean, I don't know. I think at least for my first unit, I don't know if I'll ever get a second unit of 20, but for this unit, I definitely want swords and shields. I think that just feels a bit more iconic. And that's just what I think of when I think of knights on foot. Yeah, very nice. This kit is uh, should be a lot of fun to build and paint. And you're gonna, <laughs> these are really detailed and you get a lot of these guys, so 20 knights, and I'm gonna be painting them all individually with different heraldry and shields. And uh, like, I'm gonna be painting a different iconography on each shield by hand because you don't get decals. So yeah, so it'll be a real test of my skills, but I'm pretty confident I can handle this. So yeah, uh, if you're into Bretonia and you like the idea of knights, I, I think I totally recommend this kit. Well, perhaps I should uh, suspend my recommendation until I actually build and paint it myself, but from what I can see so far, it looks really great. All right, so here we go. We have the first knight assembled. Uh, overall, it was a really nice experience. I think that uh, the kit came together really nicely. It, it fits together really snugly. Uh, mold lines are very uh, mild. So yeah, overall, I'm very impressed with this kit. Just, you can see the details are just very sharp, very crisp. It fits together like a dream, like I said before. I mean, there's a little gap filling I had to do on the, on the top of his kind of, I don't know what you call it, like a poncho or whatever where the front and the back of his torso fit together. There's a little gap, but I just used a little sprue goo and that seemed to really fix it up. So yeah, so one down, 19 more to go. So I think this is an awesome kit. Can't wait to paint it. I'm planning on doing a painting tutorial for it. So stick around for that. Okay, so bonus clips. So I know a lot of people have been uh, commenting that the Knights of the Foot on Realm are a lot taller than the uh let's say the men at arms or the quote unquote peasants and that that is absolutely true i mean and i just made a little lineup of some various uh, warhammer characters so we have a night goblin uh men at arms uh, knight of the realm on foot uh, savage orc beastman and an ogre yeah we can see that uh the knight of the realm on foot is basically almost as tall as a beastman and they're they're pretty tall so i think to be fair you know, the Bretonian Knights, I feel like, have always been taller than, uh, say, the peasants. But, you know, in the past, they were always on horses. So now that they're actually on foot, you actually get to see, you know, side by side how much taller they are. So I thought this is an interesting kind of size comparison. So I thought you might want to see. And I feel like, you know, this isn't too out of character. I feel like, you know, in the story... It can probably be said that the knights are probably far better nourished than the peasants are, so it would make sense that they're, you know, a good bit taller. And, you know, if you look at real humans, there's a great deal of variability between the heights of different people. So some men might be like, you know, five, four, five, five, and some men can be like six, eight, to seven, two. So, you know, it's not that unbelievable that there'd be like this kind of size difference. So, um, I figured uh, people will be curious and they want to know. So, yes, there is a size difference, but it's all good. I mean, you know, knights are going to be taller than peasants just because probably eating better, better nutrition. So, yep. So, uh, it's too bad I don't have a knight on a horse assembled for even more comparison. But, oh, well, figured you guys would like to see this as a little bonus. So I uh, hope you enjoy this video. If you like my content, please consider liking and subscribing. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye-bye.